Hello, this is Gata7, and today I'm going to teach you how to import custom sound effects into Super Mario 64 DS using Nitro Studio 2. Now, currently, you're going to need Nitro Studio 2 and DS Wave Convert.exe, and you're also going to need your sound effect that you want to import into the game. Alright, so, also, you currently need this at the moment until Nitro Studio 2 doesn't have listed that has the audio conversion is faulty. But once that restriction is lifted, you won't need this and you should just be able to replace sound effects with your wave. So first thing you're going to need to do is open Mario 64 DSE. And you're going to want to open your ROM. Go to the file system and extract the sound data, the stat. This file right here contains all the sound data in the game. And now you're going to want to open Nitro Studio 2. Open the sound data. Alright, now once you do that, you're going to want to find the sound effect you want to replace. Sound effects in this game are located in the sequence archives. And I'm just going to go ahead and look. Like, you can look over here. If you want to see why these things don't work, all you need to do is open this file and hook it up with a sound effect bank that has the ability to see so like I want to listen to the box open water so I'm going to hook it up to a bank that has water or something then I play it and you can see that I hear that sequence but for the most part if you try and preview one of these with space, it'll work. Yeah. Alright, so the sequence I want to replace is the Nintendo opening sound effect. And so how I'm going to do that is first open the file to look at it. So, over here, you have a list of all the sequences contained in the sequence archive. You can think of a sequence archive not like exactly a folder of sequences, but think of it as a giant sequence, like a giant MIDI file, but with multiple entry points, where this one only has one, and it's telling you Nitro Studio Sequence. Now, the red, the one on red is the bank, and this is going to be important because this will help us figure out where our sound effect is located. And if you are using the scene or something that doesn't have a bank loaded up, you can just use one of the generic sound effect banks. But for my purposes, there's the Nintendo bank, so I'm going to open up NCS Bank SC Nintendo. I'm going to look for it, and um, oh, here it is, right here. So I'm going to open it up, and and I'm going to see, figure out what wave or instrument it is. And if I look, this uses instrument number zero. And this is using instrument zero and one. And this is an 8-bit instrument, but this is the actual sound that the coin makes. But that sounds nothing like a coin, you want to say. Well, that's because it does all this weird sequency stuff to give it that coin sound effect. So what I'm actually going to do is first convert my wave to a swave using this. And it's 14.2 kilobytes. And if I look over here, er, first I need to figure out the wave archive this is in. So if I look, it uses Wave Archive 0, Wave 0, Wave Archive 0 is NCS Wave SC Nintendo. So I'm going to look here, NCS Wave SC Nintendo, and it's this one right here, 7.4. And this is double the size. Now typically, that's bad. You actually typically want your audio file to be the same size or lower, because if you're, say, replacing player voices and you make stuff take up longer than the original game then you can run into issues where you don't have music or sound effects loading in the background or playing because the game doesn't have enough memory to load them 
So what I'm going to do is compress the audio using Audacity. And I'm just going to drag the WAV file here. And you can see that the project rate is 24,000. The easiest way to compress is to either use periods of silence or to lower the sampling rate, in which case I'm going to lower it to 8,000. Then once I do that, I'm going to export the wave, a PCM16 wave, and go to Toadly. Then you just export it like that. Redrag your wave into the DS wave convert. And now I have a wave file that's 4.77. And it's significantly lower than this actually, which is cool. That means it's freeing space. And it gives me more room to work with with stuff like music. This also comes at the price of more compressed sounding audio because you're using a lower sampling weight. But just replace it with your sway file. Yeah. And you should hear it play. Now I'm just going to save that. X out of that and you're going to want to just X out of everything and save the SDAT and then reopen it. This ensures that all the banks reload properly and so I'm going to reopen the sequence archive and if I preview how it sounds in game <laughs> it doesn't sound anything like how I want it to and the reason why is because it does all this weird sequency stuff. Now there's a simple way I can remove it, and that's actually by just, if it first opens stuff to command 16, and then it plays some stuff in another channel, and this opens another channel, and it's like, yeah, why do go for the trouble of doing all that? All I need to do is just allocate one track for the channel, or no, I don't even, I don't even think I need to do that. I just, all I need to do is play them the root note of whatever the Nintendo bank is playing the sound effect at so this is playing a root note at CN5 so I'm just going to do a CN5 note give it a velocity of 127 and play it for the duration of the sound effect and then I'm going to at end the sound effect like that and then if I play it yeah! It, does, it sounds exactly as it should. So I'm going to save this sequence archive. X out of that. I'm going to save the sound archive. Then I'm going to use Mario 64 DSE to replace the sound effect. And then we're going to see how it sounds in game. Yeah! All right, you can see that, or here, I mean, that it sounded correctly. And yeah, this also works not just for Mario 64 DS, but any DS game, really, that uses SDAT. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something about hacking Mario 64 DS's sound effects. Now, I'm just going to give you a word of caution. Of even though you saw me delete everything, it was only because I knew it was under the SC Nintendo stuff. If you're, say, replacing this sound effect right here, or the key fall, and you're, then it's fine to delete anything that uses this, as long as nothing else uses this. Because, say, you're using that, so maybe the safest option is to just go do a simple CN whatever it is maybe 3 4 or maybe it's GN 5 127 0 and maybe just inserting that is the simplest way if you manage messing everything up and you need to restart with a fresh SDAT again that's just a word of caution but I hope you learned something today about hacking Mario 64 DS's sound effects and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you all later